This telecast is available on ESPN HD, presented by Dish Network. A cold blast of February weather has these Marquette fans ready to create some indoor heat inside the Bradley Center and burn the Georgetown Hoyas. Welcome to Icy Wisconsin at ESPN's Throwdown Thursday, presented by IBM. Tonight, it's number 17, Georgetown, taking on the 16-8 Marquette Golden Eagles in Milwaukee. Let's check out the Big East standings now. And of course, it's Villanova out in front of the pack at 10 and 1. As hot as can be as they ripped off nine consecutive wins to improve to 20 and 2 overall. Georgetown is one of the chasers at 8 and 3. Marquette 6 and 5 coming into tonight. That's good enough for seventh in the Big East Conference. It's a big, big game, especially for Marquette. And Tom Green, the head coach, certainly knows it. Look at him just moments ago getting the student section fired up inside the Bradley Center. They are ready to rock and roll tonight despite the snowfall outside. Ready to go, about 16,000 strong to see Marquette go for the upset against number 17, Georgetown. Green knows he does not want to be going back to the NIT for a third consecutive season with his team. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Bradley Center. I'm Dave O'Brien alongside Coach Rick Majerus. Great to have you with us tonight. And, Rick, let's talk about this one a little bit and the fact that not many expected Marquette to be in the NCAA tournament hunt, a youngish team with a couple of freshmen who play very important roles. But here they are in February. They have a legitimate shot. Now for Georgetown, coming off a tough loss to West Virginia over the weekend. They have Villanova on the road coming up this coming weekend. It's a big, big game for both sides. Here's the implications. The number one upset in the NCAA tournament tournament is the 5-12 game. Georgetown wants to be located in the top 16 and the RPI. Marquette wants to get to the tournament. They hadn't been there for the last three years. They've got to win one of these next two with Pittsburgh coming in Saturday to assure themselves of a tournament berth. Let's get to the Star Watch now. It's brought to you by IBM International Business Machines. We highlight Brandon Bowman and Steve Novak. How about your 6'9", 235-pound, 3'4 man being able to make plays off the dribble? He's the best back cutter on the team, and he's an outstanding quick step player to drive to the rim. Novak has evolved as a rebounder. He's become adept at moving without the ball and has really stepped his defense up. He's now no longer a defensive liability. He's an asset. To the lineups, Marquette, two freshmen who have started every game in Dominique James and Jarrell McNeil. Roy Hibbert, 7-2 for Georgetown. His coach, John Thompson III, believes Hibbert could develop into one of the Hoyas better all-time big men. And you know what caliber of big people they've had at Georgetown. Hoyas win the opening tip right to Bowman. He slams it down and an immediate statement by the Hoyas. Right there, Marquette was not game ready. You've got to be on top of that opening tip, particularly so when they have such great size. And Georgetown historically has looked to score off the tip. Wow, five seconds in and a thunderous dunk by Brandon Bowman. And Georgetown certainly fighting through the snowflakes to get here to Milwaukee. They came to play. The officials tonight, John Cahill, Curtis Shaw, and Steve Welmer, because of the nasty little snowstorm that hit Milwaukee today, they didn't get here until 45 minutes ago. That's a kick off of Marquette. And Georgetown will have it again here inside the first minute of play in Milwaukee. Dave, you mentioned Herbert before. How about he switches on to Novak there? When's the last time you saw a 7'1", 280-pound center switch to a three-man? Georgetown coming in 17 and 5, ranked number 17 in the country, 8 and 3 in the Big East. It was a huge win earlier this season over Pitt inside. It's Hibbert got the angle and banked it in. You got to beat him across the glass. You can't let him paint catch on that spot deep. Shoots about 60% from the floor, and you see why. Georgetown with a 4 0 lead. That's Marquette's soft underbelly, that post defense. McNeil, one of the freshmen on the move. Quick dish, got it underneath, but a foul instead. You go back to Hibbert going across the lane, the seven-footer, really learning how to move well. Well, they had two consecutive back cuts, credit a nice pick, but you got to get off to the ball. Usman Barrow's got to get over to the ball side of the court. He can't, it, you let him go to the back side of the rim for a lob. See if they got that in their arsenal. Barrow will have his hands full for sure. The 6'10 sophomore from Dakar, Senegal. The jump pass and now the swing to McNeil, but traveling with it 
And Marquette comes out a little balky here in the opening moments at home as you get a look at Tom Crean in his seventh year. Took Marquette on a magical ride to the Final Four in 2003 with Dwayne Wade, but they haven't been back to the NCAA tournament since then, and people are starting to talk. Cook off the give-and-go, lays it in. Ashanti Cook with a bucket. And there you saw McNeil's defensive strength and his liability. His strength is on the ball, extended pickup point, like a lot of freshmen off the ball. He turned his head on the pass and relaxed. Novak off to Chapman. Now to the outstanding freshman point guard, Dominique James. Marquette two possessions two turnovers not what they wanted here tonight at home against Georgetown James working on the seven footer off to McNeil and a nice lay in on the drive and finally the kids get to celebrate a bit inside the Bradley Center you know he responds very well to that like his guys scored on him he let that play come to him yet created it with his quick first step McNeil is really a penetrator Bowman who started the game with the Thunder dunk. Bounces off to Jeff Green, last year's co-Big East Rookie of the Year. Hibbert on the high post. Now back inside to Green. Working on Novak, double team, lost the dribble and lost the ball. They actually triple team that. They send a guy to double it and then the ball, guy defending the ball chase down too. Chapman flings it up over his shoulder and it drops in. Joe Chapman, a 6'4 senior out of Chicago Heights, Illinois, comes in averaging about six points a game. And Marquette with a nice recovery after the sloppy start. Georgetown can't go inside enough. Wallace on a dribble drive, gets sealed off. Hibbert gives it right back to him. As good a perimeter shooters as Wallace and Cook are, that's where they want to go right there. Hibbert, fine, fake to bank it in. And the beauty of that pass was you always want to go higher near the rim and away from the defense. That pass had those two attributes. Novak, one of the great shooters in the country. Knocks down his first three-pointer. It's eight to seven. And he is only hitting 45% for the season from out there. Truly one of the best shooters in the country. Hibber, good hands there to catch and get the basket. This could be the three ball versus the paint catch game. Look McNeil. at McNeil here. Look at how fearless he is. Rejected by Hibbert, who had six blocks against Illinois earlier this season. 16 19 to play here in the first half and there's coach John Thompson the third as the Hoyas in his second season in the top 20 a couple of major upsets as well right now ranked number 17 in the country I have a lot of respect for him he learned it at the knee of Pete Carrill and then he's given his players within the Princeton offense the freedom to be themselves Chapman with a miss they'll keep it alive Usman Barrow back out Chapman with another miss, but it's Novak collecting the rebound. They'll get at least three cracks at it here. He is hustling so much for the boards this year and playing through traffic. Novak had that sensational 41 point game against UConn in Marquette's Big East debut earlier this season. A near catch by James had it knocked away on the alley oop. Bowman. Bounce pass right into the hands of the Golden Eagles defense. Barrow with the steal. James gives off, and McNeil lost it out of bounds. Timeout. 15:36 to play, and inside it is heating up at the Bradley Center. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by IBM. Become an on-demand business. IBM can help. And in part by Mercury and your local Lincoln Mercury dealers. Georgetown, a perfect five for five shooting it. They lead Marquette 10-7 as we go inside to play. And Rick, it's high and away. Beautiful pass here to the post. He posts up, and this is Marquette's defensive under underpinnings here collapse a little bit you got to press a pass right there there's no hand up you can see his hands are down there's no pressure on a passer but watch this ball it's passed very high it's passed to the corner of the board and it's passed away from the defender and you see the result right there beautifully executed play by Georgetown but you absolutely cannot let a guy Brett Favre the situation you know, when he isn't rushed, when he doesn't have active hands tracing the ball, it's his choice. All 10 of Georgetown points have been in the paint. And all of their buckets have come off an assist. They pass and they space so well. There's a catch by Hibbert. Backs in, lost control, stolen away by James. And now gave it right back. Chapman with a leaner and he banks it in. Joe Chapman 
I should say Green, Jeff Green with the basket, averaging about 12 points a game. And quickly got it back to give Georgetown a 12-7 advantage. James calling for a play. Boy, Dominique James, the newest entry into Marquette's fine point guard tradition. And he has started every game this season for Tom Green. Marquette had called the play, and then when they got that turnover, they lost a semblance of balance there. Wallace, look at Hibbert on the floor and lay it in. Ray Hibbert off the quick give and in traffic lays it up to make it 14-7. He's what I call a willing runner. He doesn't really stride it out, but I'll tell you what, he goes as hard as he can every time. Had a big game and a double overtime victory against Notre Dame earlier this season. 18 points, 13 rebounds. Novak with a fall away off the back iron, and Hibbert has it. Here come the Hoyas again. Georgetown has had a couple of seven-game winning streaks this season, so when they get rolling, Wallace, airborne, gives it off, and Cook can't make it go. See now Marquette's helping off inside, and Hibbert is going to continue to dribble weave that handoff. We'll talk about that later on to get Georgetown good situations like that. It was Georgetown's first miss of the game. Chapman gave it off to McNeil. His running bank shot is good. Jarrell McNeil. The freshman could easily have been the player of the game in their upset against UConn. Had Novak not gone off for 41 points, but McNeil had 19 points and 12 rebounds. Not too shabby against the Huskies. Wallace fires too strong. James with a quick pass off to McNeil. And he's starting to heat up a little bit. Came in averaging 11 points per game. McNeil's an old school guy in that angle. He uses the board very well. He's got a low flat shot and he and he's able to get it in because of the board angle. Out of Chicago where he averaged 20 points, nine rebounds a game at Hillcrest High School in Chi-Town. McNeil has really been shooting the ball very, very well. Now as you the Hoyas with a shot from the corner out of the hands of Jeff Green, but it won't go. 14-11. James in and out. And Hibbert controls the glass again. And a timeout, a quick one here by John Thompson. So we'll take one as well. 12.46 to play here in the first half. It's Georgetown leading by three. Georgetown up by three here, 14-11. The Hoyas started the night by hitting their first five shots, most of those into the hands of Roy Hibbert from close range. Well, right now, Usman Barrow is hanging back in the paint to help out on Green or help out on Bowman, and Hibbert is up there because he can't shoot. And what Hibbert's doing, he's dribble weaving the ball for a handoff, or he sets a ball pick, and Barrow can't get out to help out on that. And then that's collapsing the Marquette defense. Marquette goes to a matchup zone right now. Mark, good call by Green out of the timeout. Bowman a little too strong. Green tried to tip the rebound. It'll be over to the Golden Eagles as Hibbert, working very hard in the opening moments, has hit the bench for now. Too strong and too quick, Dave. 22 seconds in that possession. He can get that same shot with, you know, seven seconds left. You gotta like his confidence, but you don't like the tempo right there. Novak has also stepped out momentarily for the Golden Eagles of Marquette. James gives it off to Dan Fitzgerald. His first shot coming off the bench. He can certainly hit that. He came off the pine to score 18 in a January win over DePaul. He's 6'9". Boy, a lot of big guys in this game will like to shoot it beyond that arc. That's for sure. He's kind of like a Novak light. You know, he hopes to evolve into that. Let's hope he becomes a rebounder and defender Novak has become this season. Cook, very quick. Gives it off and it's up top to Green. He'll set up a play here for the Hoyas. Trying to win for the 18th time this year. They burst into the top 25 earlier after beating Duke. Nice little floater, but Fitzgerald there for the rebound. I like how decisive Wallace was in that closeout. He just drove it right at him on the skip pass. McNeil with a body bump there. No foul called off to James. Marquette, by the way, 11 and 2 here at home at the Bradley Center. And the student section was certainly ready to roar at the opening tip. Although Brandon Bowman quieted them real quick for the Hoyas off the opening tip. And here's another theft by the Hoyas. Wallace gives it right back to Bowman. And now a foul with 11-16 to play here in the first half in Milwaukee. And we'll be back with more. Georgetown leading by three over Marquette.
Georgetown 14, Marquette 11 with 11.16 to play in the opening half tonight at the Bradley Center. It's time now for ESPNU's Pride of the Program. And this evening in the spotlight, it's Oral Roberts. Nearly three decades later, his record still stands. In his final college game, Oral Roberts forward Anthony Roberts poured in 65 in a first-round NIT loss to Oregon. The performance remains unmatched in NCAA postseason history. So Georgetown started out tonight seven out of seven, but they have lost a little bit of that shooting momentum, Rick Majerus. They are over their last five but Marquette unable to capitalize really because they're turning it over pretty drastically here that's five turnovers already for the Golden Eagles and errors of omission rather than commission and in regards to Georgetown Marquette's got that paint so so loaded up with Usman Barrow packing in that they can't get the ball in there Barrow's just dribble weaving in their ball picking to free him up we'll see what happens here Novak still sitting as Darrell Owens gets the pair to make it 16 11 the foul right before the break on Wesley Matthews and Steve Novak averaging about 20 points a game in Big East play remains unavailable for it now Matthews with a nice spin move knocks it down Wesley Matthews now, earlier this season he missed eight games with a stress fracture in his right foot but he's starting to get healthy again as you can see How about that strength on him take that hit whenever Georgetown dribbles at you from the high post the guy's going to back cut there you see it a pick. Wallace hands off to Owens. 11 seconds to shoot. Nice baseline roller will not go. Marquette collects it. It's James. Boy, is he quick into the offensive zone. Off to Matthews. And traveling is Dan Fitzgerald. He gives it right back. Too spit up. Too fast. Fitzgerald knows that they're going to try to make him dribble to a shot. He's got to let the game come to him a little bit. Well, He's for pressing. Mark, for Mark Hedrick, undoubtedly, as Novak returns, their biggest victory of the season, January 3rd, their upset of UConn, 94 to 79. Novak electrifying the crowd here at the Bradley Center. He had 41, but just four days later, Marquette lost to Cincinnati on the very same court they beat the Huskies on, 70 to 66. And how often do you see that? Invariably, see those major, major upsets. And then it's so difficult for the kids to come back emotionally. Jeff Green, pretty wild, commits the offensive foul. They get him for the charge. That'll be his second foul. And out he comes. Now, Marquette has not used Grimm very much, but he's strong. He's kept a good attitude. And he's in there to take some fouls, if not block out and try to play havoc with Hebert. Hibbert. Grimm wears number 33. James pulls up off the front rim. Rebounded away by the Hoyas. One thing James does not lack is confidence, nor should he. He's a four-time, four-time Big East freshman of the week. The three-pointer right on the mark. Hibbert, by the way, returning to the contest as well. So both of the big scorers or the go-to guys you would expect today are going to be back in it here. Dave, what's happening here is Marquette's so paint-oriented that they're going over the top now with skip passes, but they don't want to let those. Ooh, Novak tries to jump into him, beta call. Tie up here, and that'll be a possession arrow to keep it on this end. At 4 p.m. Saturday on ESPN, Daniel Horton in Michigan head to East Lansing to take on number 16, Michigan State, and then at 9 on Saturday primetime, presented by Cisco Systems, Taekwon Dean leads Louisville into the Carrier Dome to face Jerry McNamara and the Syracuse Orange. Both games available in high definition on ESPN HD. Can't wait for that Michigan-Michigan State game. But meanwhile, we're going to have a terrific one going on right now. Every end out of bounds play is for Novak in some way, shape, or form. Resetting the shot clock here to 17. That's the reason for the mini delay. Marquette trying to inbounds, and they do to Fitzgerald. Boy, he's slipping and sliding. Thompson on the Georgetown bench desperately wanted another turnover there. Shot clock is down to five. James with the crowd counting it down drops it in. That's a two pointer. The poise of that was particularly impressive to me. 
four point game and a quick moving first half inside nine minutes to play in the opening 20 minutes. Hibbert up top. High post for the Hoyas. Wallace back to Owens. He's quick with the ball. Watch their ball movement and spacing. What they're trying to do is get that help distorted so that they can't load in on the big fella down low. Wallace got held up. Sap, the freshman, has to fire up a wild one with one second on the shot clock, but he got it to go. There is a God after all for the Georgetown West. Well, for Jesse Sap, his prayer was answered. Here's Novak. He's cold in the opening half here at home, and he spent a lot of that time on the bench. Let's go back to that skip pass just a couple of moments ago by the Hoyas, Rick. Here's what's happening. You can see Marquette so loaded into the paint here, and now they've got ball pressure right here, so they're going over the top with the skip pass, and then as they build out to him, he's got time to shoot. Chapman off the inbounds will fire up a hook shot. That'll allow the Hoyas to run out. Wallace going one-on-one, -on -one, but instead he commits a foul. An offensive foul will take it back to Marquette. What an outstanding defensive play to be able to run back full speed and then laterally get your feet adjusted and get ahead of the ball. That was just a terrific defensive stop right here. Look at him. Nice play. That was Wes Matthews getting his nose in there. It's a name you might recall because his dad, Wes Matthews, was in the NBA for nine years. Hook shot no for Novak. Played 65 miles up the road in Madison, Wisconsin. Sure, it was a big star there. First round pick in 1980 out of Wisconsin by the Washington Bullets. Wallace to set it up here for Georgetown, leading 21 to 15. Hibbert at the foul line. Sapp will swing it. Look at him move and cut. Move, cut, space. Owens. Too long. Hibbert got knocked right out of the lane, but got the rebound anyway. Grim did such a good job of making room for himself that he pushed him into the rebound. New shot clock here, 25 to get it off for Georgetown. Now, there's the problem. There's Wallace with a miss. No one to help out on that pick because Hibbert comes out and Grim stays inside. Matthew, Matthews to Fitzgerald, and it's a round and out, although he can certainly hit that shot. That's his play. Under seven minutes to play in the first half. We've got to attack the rim a little bit more. They're living and dying that early shot in transition. Owens to Sapp and off to the right wing in Bowman. Who we have heard very little from since the Thunder dunk to start it. Missed from close range and here come the Golden Eagles of Marquette. Hibbert always plays with that pained expression on his face. <laughs> There's Matthews. Line drive shot. Novak tipped it. Taken away by Chapman. Now the bounce pass. What a beautiful pass. Owens has it from the wing. And it's in and out. Both teams getting real cold here. Novak trying to heat it up. Got to get a hand up on him. Sapp has got to understand who's shooting that shot. You need to close out and make him dribble. Put it on the floor. Steve Novak, the 6'10 senior out of Brown Deer, Wisconsin. Brown Deer High, where he was coached by his dad, Mike, who taught him to be one of the best long-range shooters around. Hibbert tied up, and he's fouled. And Grimm did a smart thing there. He wasn't going to let him dunk. He takes the foul. Grimm's expendable. Use all five. Timeout, 5.42 left in the opening half, and it's Georgetown leading Marquette by three. Great to see Travis Dean, the former Marquette star, now an NBA rookie in the house tonight supporting his old team. They can use him. Georgetown leading by three. Hey, Saturday, it's Bracket Busters presented by eBay on ESPN2. First at noon Eastern, number 24, Bucknell taking on Northern Iowa. And then at 2 Eastern, it's the Missouri State Bears facing Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and the Panthers all coming up on ESPN2 on Saturday. By the way, the next three by Steve Novak, the next beyond the line, will tie the single-season Marquette record set by Travis Diener, so he's right there on the precipice. 
Speaking of threes at Northern Iowa game Saturday they'll be raining three balls in that one with Bucknell and interestingly enough it'll be who defends the three ball best that wins that one. Travis by the way on the NBA all star break the reason he could get home and take in a ball game here in Milwaukee. And Marquette comes out with a zone here good call by Crean. Mix things up a little bit. He's kind of probing for the second half right here. Just to see what the they do. Slices in, but a miss and a foul. He'll go to the line. 520 remaining in the half. Time for a 30 at 30 Sports Center update. Let's go to Reese Davis. All right, Dave, it is official. Mike Davis is done as head coach at Indiana, effective at the end of the season. He announced his resignation, but will coach out the remainder of the campaign. And lawyers from Wayne Gretzky and his wife, Janet, say that neither will face criminal charges in connection with that multi million dollar gambling ring that was busted in New Jersey last week. Sports Center coming up after the game, and ESPN News is always on, and we'll see you at halftime. Reese, thank you. And Rick Majerus, I think this is an obvious question for you. You coached at Ball State. You had a lot of success there. You and I just did a game in Indiana. I thought you were running for governor with all the people shaking your hand and asking you about, well, if Mike Davis stepped down, would you come to Indiana? Have you been contacted about that job? I think those are restaurant owners and guys who had big man shops. <laughs> uh, no, I hadn't been contacted. And I hadn't given it a thought. You know, right now, any talk about that would take away from the terrific game we've got going on. I don't know why Bowman got cute on that last one double clutched it for a degree of difficulty shot flush it down James with a pull up pop got it Dominique James the freshman out of Richmond Indiana he was the runner up just a year ago for Mr. Indiana basketball at his high school where he averaged 31 points a game not only does he have the physical attributes he's got all the component parts psychologically confidence poise He's a good communicator yeah, and he's about as slippery as you are when it comes to a tough situation. <laughs> Bowman trying to get inside and a miss. There's Hibbert yanking down the rebound but now lost on the floor and another tie up. And Hibbert's, Mark, Marquette really going after him Rick. Hibbert's got to watch some Shaq and Duncan films. He brings the ball down. Watch him put it on the floor unnecessarily or takes it down to his chest. He's got to learn to chin that ball in the rebound or do what Duncan and Shaq do. Don't even get it anywhere below your forehead. Well, John Thompson has made the comment that he thinks Hibbert could potentially be in the same class with some great all time Georgetown big men. You talk about the class though. How about Patrick Ewing. Then you've got Alonzo Mourning from 1988 to 92 and even Dikembe Mutombo. In my opinion right now his skills are, are going to be better than those guys. His athleticism won't but his size is so much bigger. He's seven foot one seven foot two 280 pounds. Great hands shoots over both shoulders. Excellent passer successful screener and by that I mean his screening angles and the roof screen and I had him keeping the ball high until this game. Talk about great role models though for Hibbert to look back at old tape and of course you got John Thompson the original Novak with a great shot in traffic getting that jumper to go and tie it There's his dad on the left his dad Mike who coached him all through high school and he said all through school we were just trying to get him to shoot. He was too selfless sometimes. We wanted him to be a little more selfish. Ashante Cook with a back iron miss. And now Marquette can take the lead here. Novak off the fake. Chapman on the baseline. Pass tip back to Novak. Watch how willing these guys are to keep continuing to look for Novak. McNeil, the go-to guy right now, though, and Marquette takes its first lead of the ball game. He's the best driver on the floor taking it to the basket and he's a freshman. Georgetown has been its own worst enemy against this zone settling for long early jumpers. The patience they deployed in man to man offense has not been there until this possession. Marquette on a six nothing run Marquette will try to keep that run going James up ahead of everybody Bowman tipped it otherwise it would have been an easy breakaway layup. He dribbles inside, gives it off, but a miss by Usman Barro from close range. You know what happened? They forgot to go inside against the zone. The Hoyas were going inside against the man to man and against the zone. Good call by John Thompson, because I'm going to tell you, he's going to show them that their big guys are open against that zone. 
Take a look at this right here. You're going to see Hibbert down on the block right here now. He's got him on his back. Throw it into the big guy. You know, get it inside there. The winds are on the three throw line. Marquette surging into the lead here, 24 to 22. Hey, at 4 p.m. on Saturday on ESPN, Daniel Horton and Michigan head to East Lansing to take on their rivals, the Michigan State Spartans. And then at 9 p.m. on Saturday, Saturday primetime presented by Cisco Systems, Taekwondo in Louisville will battle inside the Carrier Dome against Syracuse. Both games available in high definition on ESPN HD. Check out the Big Ten standings now. Iowa at the very top at 20 and 6, 9 and 3 overall. You know the news by now out of Indiana. Mike Davis says he will step down at the end of the season. A disappointing part of the season, a season period certainly for the Indiana Hoosiers. But then you have Wisconsin, Ohio State, Illinois still very much in the running. Now you got that Michigan Michigan State game Saturday. I think this was coming off of two losses. And that is going to be one war there in the state of Michigan. Georgetown without a field goal for over five and a half minutes. Foul on the floor as Hibbert got hit. We have a timeout with 2.40 to go in the first half. A tight one and it's Marquette with their first lead of the night. Reese Davis, Fran Fraschilla, and Hubert Davis coming up on the UPS Halftime Report. We'll hear from Mike Davis' his decision to step down at Indiana, talk about how it might impact the Hoosiers the rest of the season. As far as the impact on our game between Marquette and Georgetown, how, how is Steve Novak getting his looks? <laughs> Hubert, not these, but his real look. It, uh, in transition, against a half court set, it's going to be tough for him because Georgetown switches all pick and rolls. Well, and Gerald McNeil is really giving him a boost offensively. Novak's going to keep looking, guys. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Looking forward uh, to the half. Novak, by the way, with eight points. Rick, let's talk about what goes on at the time of a timeout as far as making adjustments right after. Well, who wins a timeout? In this case, they're anticipating a zone. Marquette goes man to man. Cook just breaks it down. They've had their marching orders to go inside, and they get it there. But it just goes to show you, Cream did a good thing right there. He switched back to a man to man, kept them off balance. Cook did a good job as a veteran player of not panicking. And Marquette stays man to man out of this timeout. Well, Georgetown ball here. By the way, the Hoyas scored their first 14 points all in the paint. They've been held out of the paint entirely as far as scoring for the last 15 minutes of the game. And they held themselves out when Marquette went to that zone. Yeah, you can't ignore that call. Bowman lost control of the dribble. And he palmed it, 24-22, Marquette. Thompson's asking Bowman, why? Why is so many dribbles going nowhere? Let the offense work for you. Now Georgetown zones up a little bit here. Dominic James gives it off to McNeil. He slipped but retained possession. Better know where number 20 is if you're going to zone. Novak drawing a lot of blue jerseys when he touches it outside that line. Now he's open for a moment, and that's all it takes. I knew that was coming because they had confusion there. You know, it's funny how you turn your head and you don't keep vision on the ball and the man in your area in his own like you do in man to man. Novak tying Travis Diener for the Marquette single season three point record. He already has the career record at Marquette. Bowman off the foot, scooped up, now tipped off Novak. McNeil ahead to James. Georgetown had only been averaging 11 turnovers a game coming in, and they had the highest field goal percentage. They were playing so tight, and today they're careless, reckless, and sped up. Credit Marquette, though, with a terrific effort here. And now Marquette goes back. They're going man to man on a make, a man to man on a miss, and zone on a make. And they're in zone right now. Inside a minute left in the half, and it's Marquette by seven. Boy, did this turn around quickly. Cook way downtown. And the foul will go against Bowman of Georgetown in a rebounding fray. It's back over to Marquette. Take a look at this right here. They go inside. Loose ball. Active hands by Novak. High hands. Push it ahead. Dominique James flushes this baby down. 
Now they're running back and switching defenses. About 11 second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. First half dwindling down. Matthews with it for the Golden Eagles. Credit Marquette was just an excellent half here after that five minute mark. James backs it out. He has seven seconds to get off a shot. The freshman launches. Too short. Comes in for his own what rebound. A fighting to get out amongst the trees. With nine seconds left in the half, McNeil with a miss. Now Georgetown tries to recoup some momentum. Big mistake by Marquette. They should have held for that last shot. Hibbert with the bucket that counts right before the halftime horn. They had played so well. Coach Green's going right to McNeil right there. He's telling him, look, when we got that ball back, we had 10 seconds. We want to play clock, time and score situationally. And yet Marquette trailed most of the first half. They lead at the break, 29 to 24. Coming up next, Reese Davis and the UPS halftime report. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by NikeBasketball.com and Best Buy. Thousands of possibilities. Get yours. Coach Rick Majerus, Dave O'Brien with you, ready for the second half from the Bradley Center. Marquette surging from behind on the late stages of the first half, Coach. You look at the way the game was played. I mean, Georgetown seven for seven in the paint early on in their first seven possession, then three out of 17 thereafter. Well, they met the enemy, and it was themselves. When they saw that zone, it was a smart, shrewd move by Crean to go to that zone and then to change zone and man-to-man -man defenses a little bit on make miss and through timeouts, they settled for early jumpers. Here we see Cook right there. Hibbert was open down low, but he saw a zone and he took a shot, and that shot is Marquette's outlet to a fast break. Now we're going to see Cook make another shot, two passes, 22 seconds on the shot clock, and now you see him generate another break, and as Hubert Davis said, that's where Novak's getting his shots in transition is threes off the fast break. So if Georgetown's going to have to go inside versus his own and not take the long, quick shot. We well, showed you the graphic on Hibbert there. He ended an 8-minute, 30-second Georgetown field goal drought with a bucket right before halftime. Georgetown with possession, and Wallace knocks down a three. So a promising start to the second 20 minutes for the Hoyas. And what makes that a good shot is he had separation, he had his feet set, he rhythmed up into the shot, and he was in range. He's also a 44% three-point right. shooter. So, <laughs> But Cook's a very good shooter, too. He's about 40. Yep, and he was misfiring at the end of the half. James trying to make his move to the left. Look at how Georgetown's just free switching. How about letting Abel play Bowman? Your 6'9 guy can level off your point guard on a drive. And he did, although James gets it back with five to shoot, trying to get around Bowman to the baseline. Nifty pass to Barrow inside, and in traffic, the big fella lays it down. Usman Barrow with a bucket. James, you saw his ability to change speeds with the dribble. That's what great guards are able to do. They're able to, they have three discernible speeds. Let's see if the Hoyas go back to their outstanding opening three or four minutes when they were inside to Hibbert over and over again and he got easy basket for it and then all of a sudden it seemed like their offense shut down Cook from the corner misses again he's ice cold right now yeah he is and that was a good shot though James with an around the back attempted to save he casts it out of bounds that's about the only thing I don't like about McNeil occasionally he has an ill-advised pass you know, but McNeil is really going to be a terrific player. He's a great defender. The other freshman backcourt counterpart to Dominique James. Jarrell and McNeil, a third team parade All-American out of Chicago. He really gives them some attitude. That's one of the things they felt they lacked in past seasons that he gives them. He has moxie, swagger, and confidence. Not many freshmen have that. James has it as well. Wallace dishes inside, and that one right off the hands. A steal, and here comes James. Those two young freshmen have the psychological makeup of a more mature junior-oriented backcourt. Novak trying to get his shot. Marquette with the ball here as James calls out a play, leading 31 to 27. Who do you think it's going to be for? It's going to be for Novak, I can guarantee you. 
Somehow he's fallen into it. A foul instead as James tried his drive. 17-46 remaining here in the second half. Now I like the way they're attacking the basket. They had not shot a foul shot in the first half. And right now James is trying to correct that as is McNeil and company. Foul on Jonathan Wallace, his second for the Hoyas. Novak a catch and shoot. Got it. Every end out of bounds play has him as the first option. Tom Crean says he's the best shooter I've ever coached. I'll tell you what, there no one, there's no one in the Big East that'll dispute that. How about he's 97% from the free throw line? Yep, I don't think Calhoun will dispute it. He had 41 against UConn. Marquette locking down on defense. McNeil relentless. And he actually steps on the baseline and turns it over. A little too aggressive, Jerome McNeil, but back to Novak with a sweet shot. And here's his option on the end out. Every end out play is Novak gets a look, and then they move to somebody else. But how about he set himself up so well? 91 three-point field goals made. That last set a new school record. He's also on pace to join a select group of Marquette players to score 1,500 points and grab 500 rebounds. On that list, guys like Bo Ellis and George Thompson. Now they're in the zone, Marquette. Green cross court. Pass over it. Yeah, it was Bowman with the catch. Back to Sapp on the baseline. Flipped it right by his man, Green. Four seconds to shoot. Wallace knocks it down. A three-pointer for the Hoyas. 34-30. Once you move the ball around, attack the seam, or go inside, all of a sudden the zone constricts. Sixteen seconds on the shot clock as Novak thought about it. Chapman, James is open for a three. The rebound tips onto the baseline, out of bounds, and it's going to be Marquette ball here, and a new shot clock. Hey, Saturday, it's Bracket Busters presented by eBay on ESPN2. First at noon, it'll be number 24 Bucknell taking on Northern Iowa to prove they're worthy of a tournament berth. And then at 2 o'clock Eastern, Missouri State tangles with Wisconsin-Milwaukee and the Panthers. Wisconsin-Milwaukee is one of my favorite players, a kid named Tigger. He's a Wisconsin guy, big, strong, blocky, gets the most out of it. He's an old-school post player. Off the inbounds, James, who shot Harry from behind, and he missed it. Wallace trying to push some tempo. A sophomore out of Harvest, Alaska. I see many D1 players out of Alaska. No, let alone Harvest, Alaska. Mm -hmm. I could not tell you where that is, but I think you've recruited there. <laughs> Hibbert. Isn't that where they want to put Anwar and drill for oil? Bowman. And now Sapp. He hits a three-pointer. Jesse Sapp, the freshman out of New York. And once again, the zone is collapsed by dribble penetration. So here come the Hoyas. They have closed to within one. Novak off to James. He's certainly not bashful for a freshman. Novak moving without the ball like the great Jimmy Paxson did for the terrific Don Donner at Dayton and then for the Portland Trailblazers. Maybe one pass too many. Jerome McNeil with a turnover there on the traveling violation. Take a look at this, Dave. Here you see how to attack a zone. He draws three guys to him, draw and kick, spot up. That's what you got to do. Take the ball to the seam, draw and kick, and then you get a good shot. Marquette up 134-33 over number 17, Georgetown here in Milwaukee tonight. This telecast is available on ESPN HD, presented by Dish Network. A winter snowstorm really hitting this area with just about everything you can think of today. Snow and sleet and lightning and thunder. It was downright scary for a couple of hours here. There's the big thunder for the Golden Eagles. Steve Novak up against Roy Hibbert. Head to head tonight. And turning into a good one here with about 15 minutes remaining. We are well into the second half. Bowman off to Wallace. Marquette comes out man to man. It gives the appearance of a zone because they're playing between the Georgetown player and the basket in hopes to eliminate the back cut. The Hibbert. staple of Princeton offense. Hibbert really wants it. They bounce it to him, but stolen away by James, who stepped in very nicely. He has such great presence away from the ball. Now nice. he'll shoot it. Nice pick by Grimm. 
I'll tell you what, those are all the little things. And they say a player does all little things. Grim laid his body out there. And you know something Grim came by before the game, as you'll recall, and I said to him, you're doing a good job of keeping your head up. He hadn't played, and he should be an inspiration to his teammates. He never got, when he was getting a little bit buried on that bench, he was so far in the doghouse, I thought he would have had to get cable. Bowman up top to Wallace. Novak had made the previous four three-pointers tonight for Marquette. Finally, James makes one. A miss on one by Bowman, and it's Novak snatching the rebound. And that's what Novak has improved on so much. We talked about his rebounding efforts, averaging six per game, but he had 16 in that stunning victory over UConn. Fitzgerald out to Novak. That one's going to go in and out. And his shooting touch is so good when he lines it up and there's no one around to guard him, you expect it to go in. And when you see him miss, like all great shooters, he's always where? Right off the back of the rim. But his rebounding is what's caught my attention. Last year, he was just as likely to date Paris Hilton as he was to get a rebound. And this year, I'll tell you what, you expect him to get rebounds. The launch around and out by Green. Settling for the three ball themselves. That really got Georgetown into trouble at stages of the first half. James gives it off. It's Novak open again. Way downtown. His shot preparation with his lower body and his hand targets. He always has his shoulder over the toe. It's just a clinic. Seventeen for Steve Novak. Marquette's doing Marquette has not taken a foul shot, but yet they've really gotten into driving into the paint. McNeil and James's penetration have set the set scene for Novak to get those shots. What a nice job by the Warriors of attacking paint. Marquette feeling pretty rich. A 40-33 lead over Georgetown on a bevy of three-pointers. Rick, they want you to come dancing with them at Marquette. They want to go to the big dance in the NCAA tournament after back-to-back -to -back trips to, <laughs> to the NIT. Getting a little help with your buddy Jay Billis. So what do you think? I mean, you know, beginning of the season, not many thought Marquette had a chance to go to the big dance. Do you think they will? I think they will, and they got that wiggle down with Billis and I right there rocking <laughs> against each other. I'll tell you something. The student fans have done a great job here of getting this crowd into it. Marquette comes out with his own. And a shot they could foul right in front of his own bench by Fitzgerald. And talking about the Marquette tournament chances, let's check out their resume. Six and five in the conference, strong RPI and strength of schedule, big win over Connecticut. My belief personally is they've got to win one of these next two. This one today or Pittsburgh Saturday. And I think if they do that and don't stumble against the Providence, now I'm not going to diminish Marquette. I mean, uh, Notre Dame and Louisville. Those are the other two teams they've got to play. Because uh, Patino ain't quitting on anyone, and Notre Dame has got big heart in spite of not a big time record. Cook drives, swatted away by Fitzgerald. He went down hard. He's still on the deck. Shot missed, tapped out of bounds off Marquette, but Fitzgerald very slow to get up. And Grimm's play has been inspirational. I'll tell you, he's in the scrum. He's in the middle of everything. He's throwing his body around. He's coming to penetration. Look at Grimm. Look at him work here. Now watch him. He'll go right up here to Hibbert. Fitzgerald still laying down there. He's up and stays in the game. Marquette goes man to man on the end up. He's changing defenses. Have given Georgetown pause for concern. That shot moments ago, by the way, the first two point shot attempt by these teams here in the second half for Georgetown. They've been firing up threes like they're going out of style. Shot clock is at 10. Give it to the big guy. There you go. Hibbert off the double team. He's held and fouled. 11.52 remaining. And it's a seven point lead for the Golden Eagles of Marquette. Marquette leading by seven with just over 12 minutes to go here in the second half, and they're doing the little things, especially Brother Grimm. Take a look at this young man. Watch him defend Grimm. He's so overmatched right there in terms of size. Watch him level off that dribbler. He's the enabler to the steal. Now watch this. He has the presence of mind to come down the floor 
wipe out Dominique James's man in the pick, and you saw him try to get to the rim for rebound as well. This guy was buried, averaging five minutes a game, and now look at his intensity. Look at those eyes. Bodying up on Roy Hibbert, and it's made a difference given a quick start of Hibbert, who has chilled. He's as cold as outdoors here in Milwaukee after the snowstorm that enveloped this area starting late last night. His intensity and his eye intensity grim right now reminds me of Singletary, that old middle linebacker for the Bears. He used to have those Popeye eyes because he was so intense. Take a look at him right there. Look at that. Off the ball stance, vision, communicating, talking. He's all about team, that kid. And that really induced Hibbert into a clearing out foul. The alley oop. James was there, but Sapp caught it. I like that call. Your impression, James. You, gotta, you want to always be too high in a lob. Never up, never in. So Georgetown down by seven. Trying to get their offense in the same gear it was in after they scored on the opening tip in about four seconds. Marquez playing terrific post defense. But Grimm and Hibbert really going at it in that lane. That opens things up quite a bit. Green with a miss, though. And it's tipped out of bounds off the Hoyas. They're getting to the rim. They got to learn to use that glass or dunk it more. Take a look at Grimm moving his feet. Georgetown without a field goal in over four and a half minutes. It's their third field goal drought of four plus minutes in the game. James got hit while airborne right on the elbow and he'll be shooting. At four o'clock on Saturday on ESPN it's Daniel Horton in Michigan heading to East Lansing to take on Michigan State and then at nine o'clock on Saturday primetime it's presented by Cisco Systems. Taekwon Dean leads Louisville into the Carrier Dome to face Jerry McNamara and Syracuse. Both games available in high def on ESPN HD. Rick Pitino, of course, at one time worked for Jimmy Baham at Syracuse. John Thompson's dad, of course, went head to head many, many, many times in the storied rivalry between Georgetown and Syracuse when Big John was the head coach there. He's got to be proud of his son. His son's done an excellent job this year coaching this club and cultivating, making a big improvement over last year in terms of their offensive continuity as well as their off the ball defensive presence. Well, Dominic James has not been real good at the line this year, just 63%. But those were the first foul shot attempts all night for Marquette, and he nailed them. Their penetration has been more to draw and kick. They don't really feel comfortable with the post guy going inside. Cross court, Cook has it. Back to Owens. He'll drive the baseline and lay it in. A little too strong. Green with a tough rebound in traffic. A miss. Fights for his own board. He gets it back and he's traveling with it. The Georgetown guys are giving a really good effort here. They haven't been able to get it to drop because the Marquette guys are using their bodies as barriers to the glass. They're not necessarily leapers. They're bereft of any shot blocker, but nevertheless, they're pushing up and under a little bit. The subtlety of that has caused Georgetown to miss. Well, you think, Rick, potentially this could be the win to push Marquette into the NCAA tournament after going to the NIT each of the last two years off the heels of a Final Four in 2003. James, left-handed, left it on the rim, but what a move on the play by the freshman, Dominique James. And the thing with James is we'll take a look at this drive right here. Watch how he changes speeds and direction. And changes hands. Yes. He's really, really a very outstanding player in terms of so many aspects for a freshman. He's a defender, he's a rebounder. Got a big handshake there from Tom Crean. His leadership skills have evolved so much this year. Crean's done a good job of letting those evolve. Well, a lot of good point guards have come through here at Marquette's. Meanwhile, as Georgetown throws these skip pass, Georgetown's got a shot fake and drive this zone. Well, Wallace with the miss, but Owens there to return it. 42 to 35. Georgetown still hanging around despite some good long runs by the Golden Eagles. Matthews had been hurt. He's missed a lot of the season. He had that big middle game jump shot the first half. Novak's getting tired. Go back with it here. 
Bowman reaching and bumps him with 9.03 remaining in the second half. Now here's the vulnerability of the zone. As that ball goes up and there's no definitive block out, it's very hard to get bodies on guys. Take a look at Bowman come in there unimpeded and just get that tap. Actually, Darrell Owens. Oh, that was Owens? Yeah, Owens getting high up over the rim. Novak catches. Yeah, I think you're right. He left it off the front rim. Barrow, though, collects the rebound, hits the deck. Got it free to McNeil. That's because it was from the 715 area code. That's Green Bay, Northern <laughs> Wisconsin. You would know. <laughs> Matthews with 8.42 to go. And Marquette feeling like they're in command of the thing, but Georgetown won't fade. Novak couldn't ever reach that pass. A sloppy effort by McNeil. He's turnover prone. That's the only fault with the young kid. He's going to shots going to develop. He works so hard at it. He gets a little bit complacent as a passer and then he doesn't read the defense well but I'll tell you he's a very very good defender and an excellent driver and fearless. Sap fires just barely grazing the front edge of that rim. Georgetown continues to try to beat it from the perimeter not going into the high post. The field down the lane. A foul before the shot, so wave off that basket with 8-10 left in the contest. Now you talk about the rhythm and the pace of the game, Rick. Who does it benefit right now with a little over eight minutes? I'd say it's all Marquette because they're the team that's showing patience, ball movement, playing a little later in the clock, and and causing confusion with Georgetown's defense. Well, the freshman guards you have to be impressed with in McNeil and Dominique James for the Golden Eagles. They can flat play. UConn found that out. They got beat off the dribble constantly that night. Barrow inside and count it. He'll go to the line. Usman Barrow, the man out of Senegal, will shoot. We have a timeout on the court right now. Let's go to Reese Davis in the studio for a Sports Center 30 at 30. Up. ESPN presentation of college basketball is presented by IBM. Become an on-demand business. IBM can help. And in part by OnStar by GM. To learn more, visit OnStar.com. Before the game, Marquette head coach Tom Crean firing up the crowd here at the Bradley Center. He was also a bringer of gifts, as it turns out. I feel like a little bit like Santa. We've got so many gifts here. As you can see this Dwayne Wade t-shirt. He's playing in the All-Star game this weekend, obviously. But this is a giveaway for everybody here. We've got an opportunity for all of you to improve your looks with this Steve Novak mask. You can put it up to your face like this. Look through it and give him a lot of excitement. And something that's really important to all the coaches. So Christmas coming early. For the students and all the fans here at the Bradley Center and Tom Green trying to edge closer and closer to what would be the 17th win of the season for the Golden Eagles and it would be you have to argue their second best win of the year also had a huge win against UConn Barrow with a rather ugly miss he's 59 percent from the line a lot of time yet to play here but in these low scoring games this type of a nine point lead is almost a 16 point lead. Especially the way Georgetown is shooting it one for their last nine Bowman off to Hibbert pinned against the glass Barrow got a hand on it. He's credited with the block 17 to shoot here. And when you mention how Georgetown's shooting it how you shoot it coincides with shot selection. The Hoyers have been the most of efficient offensive team in the league leading the Big East in field goal percentage while turning the ball over just 11 times prior to this game but they're at 14 turnovers now and their bad shot selection has given Marquette the break. Boy tough shot Hibbert fouled as well and Roy Hibbert will go to the line working on Barrow. How about the nice footwork of him. He stays low right here. Watch him he doesn't speed up turns and faces. That's a classic Georgetown big man move in the mold of Matumbo or Ewing. Well, Georgetown has recaptured some of that old Hoya defensive prowess as well and part of that because the 7 2 Hibbert is patrolling the paint and now Georgetown pushes up extends interesting a team that wanted a slower pace is now trying to create a little faster one yeah that slow pace has worked so well for the Hoyas number 17 in the country number one defensively in the Big East Novak with it 
You said moments ago you have signs. You've seen signs that he is tiring. He pulls up. That's a sign right there. When you're short on the front of the rim and you're a great shooter like he is, almost all of his misses are back of the rim. 7:05 left here in the second half from the Bradley Center in snowy Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Coach Rick Majerus, Dave O'Brien with you. It's number 17, Georgetown again. The same Marquette. play again. Now they're running. The kick out. Now up top to McNeil. Rebound tipped in another whistle, and this will go against Marquette. Good ball movement by Marquette. The foul against Barrel is second. And a fifth team foul against the Golden Eagles. They'll get Grimm back in in a little while for the terrific job he's done, but Barrow gives him a nice look. They're wearing Hibbert down. Hibbert down. Okay, here's the zone. See if Georgetown collapses it, goes into the middle of it, or through it to get a good shot. Cook tried to zip that pass to Green, tipped away by Marquette. 19 seconds on the shot clock for the Hoyas. What you want to do is ball fake a little bit more, pass fake against the zone, and then that opens up your seam or your gap dribble. Off the inbounds, Wallace. Bowman faked it. His 17 footer is good. Good shot in rhythm. I told you there's a lot of time left. It's what a great game right now. Four points. Less than six and a half minutes to go. Do you feel the momentum swinging as you look at Marquette's Novak with 17 to lead them? I do feel it swinging. McNeil blocks out of the sky and a clean block by Green. Man, did he get up? Bowman. Nice decision by Bowman to back dribble that. But now he wants to shoot the three, and it's an ugly one. Hibbert, How about that rebound? Tough oh. board and the basket as well. My God, just as we have talked about him not bringing the ball down below his eyes, he does it. He's very tired, too. Well, it seems everybody is, but the Hoyas are on a 7 0 run here to close to within two. James, his follow. Is good right in front of his own bench for three and right over a seven foot one guy Hibbert a fadeaway three pointer to make it 47 42 or did Marquette need that basket and does it get the crowd excited cross court it's Cook Bowman now dishes back out to Wallace Wallace casts it up for Hibbert he got inside and laid it in. No foul as Barrow hit the deck. I, I like that no call foul. I thought the ref did a good job on James that. again. Too strong this time. And it's Barrow going down and he's pleading for a foul. And his appeal is answered as he got hacked. But Hibbert has really come alive here down the stretch for Georgetown. Watch him rebound this baby here. He goes up with two hands. Takes it up strong, plays through the hit and through the fatigue. Now, this last one here, that may have been a little bit of theatrics there with Barrow. He might have been better. I thought it was a good no call, though, Dave. I really did. What do you think? You call it. I would agree with you, and I think the big fella from Senegal has played some important minutes down the stretch here for the Golden Eagles, but the guy they're focused on at the moment is Dominique James. Who is bent over right in front of his own bench. And the point guard is the heart and soul for this team, but he's limping right now to take a seat. Not a good sign at all for the Golden Eagles. He cramps up late in games. I don't know if it's a fluid, if he's depleted with his fluids. I don't know if it's he's wound so tight, he's such a muscular, he's a little fire plug ball of muscle. Sometimes he just rested here, he relaxes. Barrow to miss. Rebound tipped by Novak. Came out to Barrow. Tipped three, four, five times. Chapman scoops it up. And a foul there against the Hoyas with five minutes left in the game. That foul there by Wallace epitomizes what's a bad foul. 34 feet from the rim. Six guys that touch the ball. He gets it. Just settled on and play defense. Why foul in that situation? You're down by three. Chapman will go to the line Joe Chapman the senior for three years in a row he has been the recipient of Marquette's hit the deck award which is given annually to the Golden Eagle who takes the most charges in practices and in games 
He's inspirational in practice. When I haven't watched him practice, he's a good leader. He's verbal. He's a he's a fine role model for those young guys, McNeil and company. In and out, he got one of two. We check with the Marquette bench, and indeed it is cramping. That's the problem with Dominic James, so you would expect to get him back in shortly. So what happens when you got a PE minor, you can identify those cramps. Bowman on the baseline. Boy, a tough move and it dribbles in for him. He found the body, he played that beautifully. That's where Bowman should look to go a little bit more. Well, they're trying to find someone else who can put it in the hole other than Roy Hibbert, who has scored seven of their last 11 points. We've got a timeout, Marquette. Good call by Crean right there. Now, Take Bowman inside just a couple of seconds ago. This is a gorgeous move, Rick. What I love is how he wants the ball, but watch him read this. He baits contact. He goes middle, baits contact, comes back baseline. You always want to turn middle first because it's very difficult to bring help on along the baseline. Marquette leading by two in Saturday. It's Bracket Busters presented by eBay on ESPN2. First to noon Eastern, number 24, Bucknell. And the Northern Iowa Panthers prove they are worthy of a tournament berth. And then at 2 Eastern, the Missouri State Bears face Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and the Panthers. That's right next door. How about the Missouri Valley Conference now? And Rick, I know you're not a huge believer in some of the RPI material, but Wichita State at 17, Northern Iowa, Southern Illinois, Missouri State, Creighton, and Bradley all within the top 50 in the RPI. There may be a mathematical formula that computes that, but I'm here to tell you that it doesn't really work out in real life. And that's why, you know, math is misleading. So RPI is not real life. Well, you know, I, I'm not a math guy. I, I don't understand it. I didn't take it. I didn't like it. But I can tell you who's got a good team and who doesn't. And there's simply four. There's probably going to be three teams and maybe four. And I'm a big fan having been at Ball State, as you alluded to earlier in the telecast, you know, of mid-major basketball. Well, how many teams on that list we just saw do you think are deserving of an NCAA three. tournament? Three. I think, they, I three. think that Missouri Valley deserves three. Two for sure with the new NIT formula where it's not that old boy network. And I say that affectionately. That's what Jack Powers and those guys do with the NIT for years. They keep it afloat, help so many kids. But with that new formula, they'll have two more in the NIT play. Cook with a three and a big one after Marquette had just given up the ball on a five-second violation. And Georgetown has the lead back on a 14-4 run. John Thompson's proud of his son on that because he got the right guy the shot off that back pick and perfect play execution coming out of the timeout. Really sets up this last three and a half minutes as a back and forth. Georgetown leading 49 48. They've got to get Novak back in some sort of rhythm, but he's playing real tired. They've got to get him shots. He can't create shots for himself very well. Well, there's an example as he forced that one, and it's Hibbert catching the free ball. And it was a good no call because when you jump in the defender, you shouldn't go to the foul line. He induced the contact. That's what they call the principle of verticality and refereeing jargon. This is Georgetown's first lead since it was 22 to 20 at 505 remaining in the first half. And Dominic James is no longer on the bench. Oh no, he's coming in. That's why he's not on the bench. Green trying to find space, but he travels with it. And now Dominic James, who has been bothered by cramping, the point guard has re-entered the contest. 252 remaining in this one. Georgetown has taken a momentum. Cook with a long range three. Sports Center is indeed next, but we have 252 left at a close one. We give you the reset. Two timeouts left for Georgetown, three for Marquette. And the Golden Eagles have the possession arrow. We've talked a lot about momentum here, Rick, in the last two or three minutes. It has shifted definitely to Georgetown. We had talked about that. And we had said that when Georgetown was down seven. It was 40-33 Georgetown, but that lean has disappeared. Take a out. Five seconds. And that one with Green sprawling and hitting the deck. So the turnover. Now let's take it back. Both of these teams have had Big big wins this year. Of course, we talked about Georgetown with two different seven-game winning streaks. 
That was a good call by Georgetown on the timeout to go to what we call the center field press. They faced front of the two primary receivers, took the man covering the inbounder, and put him behind those men. Push off and a foul. Excellent call by Wilmer, a very good ref. That was the precise call. When you come forward with that forearm and you bow it out there and extend it, you're going to get that call. Coach Thompson gives him that rolled eyed Bellucci look, but nevertheless, the call was correct. Now John Thompson, the third Princeton man. In fact, he was a really good passing forward as a member of the Princeton Tigers. He finished his career there as a Princeton graduate, number three all time in school assists. James gives it off, and the shot is going to be knocked down. Sweet as you please by Joe Chapman and Marquette is trying to retake that momentum. That was a momentum player right there. They look to score off of a side out of bounds player at three quarter court. Well designed and, and, and ex executed play. Green lobs it into the corner for Bowman. Missed that one badly. Grimm tangling for it. That one is going to be off of the Hoyas. And with two minutes left, Marquette's lead is two. Georgetown presses up right here. The nice thing about James and McNeil, when they see press, they look upon that as a scoring opportunity on the other end. And that's the first tenant to breaking the press. Look to score on the other end. Both very dangerous with the basketball on the dribble. Novak, dog tired, staying in. But James, coming back off the bench after those cramping problems, looks healthy to go. Novak off to James. The youngster is very patient. McNeil off to Chapman. There he goes again. Not this time. Cook steals the rebound. He tried to play to the hot hand. Not a bad move because they're so loaded to Novak defensively. Timeout. Georgetown takes one. The Hoyas down to one with a minute 24 left and down by two on the scoreboard. Take a look at him pressing here on the inbound pass. Well, here's Marquette's inbound. It's a backdoor play. And then you saw a beautiful change of pace and what passing court awareness by Dominique James right there. That was the total package. A beautiful back cut, backdoor play. And James handled that like an NBA vet with that baseline drive, baseline drip pass. James, Big East Rookie of the Year candidate. He's been outstanding at 4 p.m. on Saturday on ESPN. Daniel Horton and Michigan head to East Lansing to do battle with their state rival, the Michigan State Spartans. And then at 9 on Saturday primetime, presented by Cisco Systems, Taekwon Dean will lead Louisville up against Jerry McNamara and the Orange of Syracuse inside the Carrier Dome. Both games available in high definition on ESPN HD. Michigan, Michigan State Saturday would be just one terrific game. Well, this one is turning into one as well with a minute 20 to go. It has been all along. I mean, this has been a well played chess match at a high intensity level. Low scoring, but a whole lot of fun. The Hoyas with it down to cross court. Wallace along the baseline. And he turns it over. Stepped out of bounds. Wallace driving the baseline and stepped on the line. Novak getting over, maybe a little bit of contact, but Wallace could not tiptoe around it. They get Grimm out, substitute for offense with Wes Matthews coming in. They've got a better ball handler, shooter. Both teams are substituting for whatever side of the ball on there right now. Georgetown making its defensive substitutions. Yep, Darrell Owens checks in, number 20 for the Hoyas. All you want to do right now is take care of the ball and get a good shot. You've only got two objectives here. Last time they went to Chapman on the shot, which I thought was such a good call. James pulls up a floater and he got it. How about that crossover change of pace dribble? Shades of Timmy Hardaway for the freshman who will be, book it, will be the Big East player of the year. Big, big shot for the first year man for Marquette. Timeout, Georgetown. Dominique 
James the man of the moment got rid of those cramps came back in the game and you're going to see right now how he handles this with a change of pace dribble there it comes Tim Hardaway crossover takes the body contact puts the teardrop up watch him change the speed right there keeps his eyes up comes to balance I love that little guy I had coach Haskins on my radio show today he was talking about Tim Hardaway how about Gary Payton wanted to go there with him and he turned him down well Travis Diener could certainly play when he was with the Marquette Golden Eagles a great guard in his own right there's another one on the way and Dominique James the 5'11 freshman Diener because of the all-star break of the NBA able to get home and Watch his old college team maybe pull off a big, big win in the Big East. Here's a look at the standings now. Georgetown at 8 and 3, Marquette 6 and 5, Villanova hot as can be, and they've won nine straight games, now 10 and 1, and leading the conference, everybody else chasing. But Marquette trying to get back to the NCAA tournament after missing the last two of them and being forced to go to the NIT. They've got a special point guard here, though. Dominic James trying to lead them to March Madness. Peter could be fined by Stern for not being compliant with the NBA dress code. <laughs> but right now, if Marquette makes a stop, they're headed back to the big dance, in my opinion, unless they falter at Louisville, Notre Dame. You think this win will do that for I them? think a win, this is a big win right there for the Warriors. Oh, pardon me, the Golden Eagles. I, I coached them when they were the well, Warriors. They were always the Warriors when you coached They'll them. They'll always be the Warriors to me. From when I coached them, I was a walk on foreman and a student here. I apologize to the administration who so much want to promote Golden Eagles. I think Tom Crane, if he wins this one tonight, everything's forgiven. Yeah, call him anything he wants. What a big possession right now. I hope they don't settle for the J. It looks like they're going to, though. Green off to Owens, the fake, the leaner really forced up an ugly shot. 23 you seconds foul right left. now. You got a foul. You're respecting who's got the ball. And James is tied up and fouled with 20 seconds left. Marquette leading 53 to 49. There's no way that was a foul. And credit Marquette. We're leveling off the dribbler. Good defensive communication. Help side presence. Marquette did a terrific job defensively throughout the entirety of that possession. Watch him switch this. Nice job. Stays down, doesn't get baited into the air on the shot bait. You have to have as defensive awareness is as important as offensive awareness relative to where the shot clock was, and the Marquette team had it in that possession. Well, the crowd tonight's coming in from the cold out of doors after getting blasted by a snowstorm has really made a difference for the Golden Eagles that as many who showed up were able to get here through the tough weather conditions. One thing about the fans of the Marquette Golden Eagles here in Wisconsin, they know how to drive through snow and a few inches of the white stuff doesn't bother them in the least. No, not at all. There'll be white stuff called confetti. They get that. They got Digger Phelps there behind the bench with a big poster. You got to fall right now. You got to see when you're down four like that and they got it to Novak and he's the man who got fouled and oh he's only 98 percent at the foul line he has missed one free throw in 59 attempts all season I have never seen a senior evolve like he has relative to the two aspects of play that were somewhat foreign to him in his first three years that is defense on and off the ball and rebounding in traffic Novak as automatic as they get a career 93 percent foul shooter his dad taught him everything he knows right his dad Mike is coach at Brown Deer High in Wisconsin he's here watching tonight just like he taught him in the backyard 55 49 Georgetown has to hustle cook all the way down uncontested good idea now and another timeout this one by Marquette Here's what I'm going to do if I'm Georgetown here. I'm going to go for one hard trap and steal and then foul because even if I follow him, everything's going to be coming into Noack right here. And if not, the secondary guy is probably going to be either Chapman. If I'm Georgetown right now, 
I'm going to put extreme pressure on the ball and then go for a quick trap. See if I can't fall into a steal in spite of the fact that it's only 12.8 seconds. Because even if you fall right now, Dave, you know, at four points down, your only chance is to pick off a steal here and then maybe get a second one or then the quick foul on the inbound pass if, in fact, you can be the beneficiary of the steal. Of course, you know, Georgetown knows who the best foul shooter on the floor is, and they'll try and seal off Novak. 12.8 seconds remaining. Marquette with the ball here. Novak will be primary receiver, then it'll be Chapman. Another senior. Dominic James, so impressive here. There's Chapman. Yep. And Chapman with a catch. He's quickly fouled. Less than a second ticking off the clock. A four-point separation. John Thompson the third, perhaps on his way to what would be the fourth loss in the Big East this year for Georgetown. And for Marquette and Tom Crean, a 17th win of the season. Coming off a loss to Rutgers on Sunday, and they're in a rugged stretch of games right now. They've got Georgetown and Pitt back to back, right on the heels of their loss to Villanova. And Villanova is going to be there waiting on the Hoyas. Indeed. A look at Marquette's upcoming schedule. And it is tough at Notre Dame. Notre Dame smarting after all of those close, hard fought losses, and that at Louisville on March 4th. Don't discount Providence. Remember, they're all playing for a tournament berth in the Big East. It's the truth. And the newly enlarged Big East, 10 seconds remaining. Bowman nearly lost it to Wallace in NBA 3 and then some. Barely got a piece of the rim. 2.8 seconds remaining. And this one is done. All but the shouting. 57-51 Marquette. And the fans beginning to celebrate a really important win for Marquette. What a big win. That's it. 57-51 the final. Mr. Novak delighted with his son's effort tonight. And all the Golden Eagles who win a dandy at home. Sports Center comes your way next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. And for more on this game, check out Post Game Extra on ESPN News. Along with Rick Majerus and our entire crew, I'm Dave O'Brien. We say good night from snowy Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Good night from the Bradley Center. 57-51. Marquette beats Georgetown. Sports Center is next.